Hello and welcome to my video on installing a UV light in my drum filter. So, as you can see with this drum filter, we've got a lot of brown in here and around the actual uh, drum filter itself, there's a lot of brown and that sort of stuff slightly blocking it up. Uh, you might be able to see that the water flows a little bit better in the cleaner slots. And it's a bit of a pain to get off that stuff. I've, I keep brushing at it, but not doing too well. Um, However, this drum here has a UV light in it there, and as I'll show you in a minute, that drum is like brand new inside, and so is my other drum that also has a UV light, so I thought, well, I'm going to put a UV light in this, and hopefully we can get rid of all this brown stuff. So, let's get on with putting a UV light in it. So there we go, that's the drum filter sufficiently drained, drain it right to the bottom. All I did is turn the inlet off to it, and uh, leave the pump on until it got too low for the pump to suck any more water out below them uh, pipe bits just there so yeah it's nicely drained and now what we're going to do is find out where to drill the hole just here for the UV light similar to that one and then uh, drill it I guess <laughs> and fit it in you might notice it's a bit noisy in here and that's because I put this pump on here so the, uh, normally the water pumps out of that drum and into this filtration system but at the minute obviously the drum's not on but I don't want my filter to die so what I've done is I've dipped that pump there in the water and that just sucks the water straight up and across and back in and uh, it'll just keep the media alive and stops me from having to rush the actual uh, putting the UV light in I could take as long as I need now because it won't affect the pond's operation at all so here we are with actually boring the hole in the side of the drum filter that the UV light will eventually fit through. So what you'll see now is this, there's actually two holes in the drum filter there. The lower one of those two holes is actually a mistake hole and that was basically a test. What we did is we got some measurements together that we thought were about right in the right position and we actually drilled it knowing that if we were slightly off or slightly in the wrong position it wouldn't matter too much and what we did is we put the drill through and put the collar that uh, holds the UV light in place onto the end of the drill to see where it fit and it turned out that it would actually hit the side of the drum filter so we wouldn't be able to properly tighten the collar, tighten the collar up if we put the hole there so what we decided to do is move the hole up and slightly to the left but still within the hole borer's diameter so that the hole borer is now currently cutting out that mistake so that the UV light now fits in perfectly fine in the place where it should go but we haven't got a hole left to fill in. Now the hole borer itself is actually a wood cutting bit so it's just a really sharp wood cutting bit and it's all about just taking your time not letting it get too hot and making sure it actually cuts the plastic instead of melting through it or you'll have nothing but problems. So there you go, there's the hole drilled. Well, the other hole is actually a bit smaller than uh, what is required by the fitting that we're putting in it. So what we're going to do now is just clean it off really and file a bit of file around, make it neater, make it a bit neater than the drill can drill it and then it should fit in lovely and uh, we'll put a bit of PTFE and uh, rubber gaskets on it so it don't leak and we'll get back to that in a second so there we go, that's the finished hole, all nice and cleaned up and uh, we've vacked all the uh, muck from inside the drum so nothing gets into the pump system now this is the end piece that fits into there as you can see it's quite a nice tight fit and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put one of these rubber gaskets on and the, one goes on one side of it and the other goes on the other side so there's two on it, one this side, one the other side and then we'll be putting uh, PTFE on that as well so these are the flanges that I'm going to be putting on the uh, on the drum uh, the one that comes with it looks like this so it's a lot smaller and it's a rubber thing and you only get one to put on whichever side you choose to put it on instead I'm going to use these which are EPDM uh, stub flange uh, gaskets and these are so much better they're a much stronger material as you can see they're not like a rubbery material and they don't expand and it's a lot sort of bigger so you can get a lot better sort of placement on there and it, these don't tend to leak 
Uh, whereas I've found that these tend to just move a little bit, bend in whatever way when you put a bit of force on them, and they tend to leak. And also, I'm going to be using two of them on each side. I've actually used them rubber ones on this one here. This is one of the first ones I ever did. And I had nothing but problems. You can see I've ended up gluing it round and it ended up leaking for quite a long time. Fortunately, time has just stopped it leaking, but it being indoors is quite a pain because I don't really want this floor getting wet and that. So it was quite a nightmare that, but fortunately it's stopped leaking now. But I've never had that problem with these gaskets. They always uh, manage to seal when you get it tight enough. There we go. There we go, that's the finished product. As you can see, the gasket's on it just there, and then uh, we've got the uh, PTFE on it as well. We've also put a bit of black silicon on it just to sort of get in there and make sure it seals because I really, really don't want it to leak. Um, but that's optional, really. Uh, the uh, PTFE and the gasket should do it quite nicely. So let's put it in. You can see how tight the fit it is, it's really tight. And now all we've got to do is put this on the other side of it. So there we go, it's sticking through now. I can put the uh, internal gasket on it. Like so. And then put the outer collar on it. And get a really good tight note. So now it's just a case of getting a good grip on that and getting it as tight as we possibly can. So I'll get on with that. Right then, we've got the uh, joint on and we've tightened it up quite nicely with some grips. So now it's a case of putting the UV light into it. So this is the bulb in this little tube. And then, out. this is the quartz sleeve. Lift it up in front of the end. There we go, like that. Right, now there's this little rubber on the quartz sleeve, and that actually goes into that recess there, and that's what seals, stops it leaking. That's in there. Got that in there like that. Now it's just a case of just slide that in there. I hope it doesn't hit anything. So a little left to do my stand. There we go. So now get the mechanism out of this box. And that's what goes on there. And now I want the bulb. This bulb. I, uh, I'm not 100% sure if you are not supposed to touch these bulbs, but I don't have to touch it, so I'm not going to. Uh, basically, just going to pop this on here. So. That's a good fit. And then slide it in. Make sure that rubber's on there properly. Push it up and put the uh, back on. So. Oh. Give that a good nip. I'm not really going to do much more than hand tight for now. So I can tighten it up later if it leaks. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So let's just have a look inside. So there we go, look, see where the uh, quartz sleeves ended up. Yeah, seems quite a good position to put it, I'm pleased with that. So let's fill the drum up and see if we leak. So there we go, we've finally got the UV light on and we have filled the drum up and she's back running again. Uh, all the pumps are back on, so we're back working. And much to my surprise, it does not leak. 
and nor has it leaked at any point so we got it right the first time so yeah must be getting good at it the third one I've done and finally <laughs> I don't have to adjust it to make it stop leaking it actually works you can see the UV light down there is currently switched off and I'm just gonna plug it in in a second and get it going see if it works just before I plug it in though this is the actual controller for the UV light so it's a pretty decent size sort of unit so I've got to figure out somewhere to put that I'll probably be putting that in the basement with uh, the one for that tank and I've just put a plug on the end of it because it comes with just bare wires and I've just popped a plug on the end so let's plug it in and see if it works so there we go I've just plugged it in you can already see the blue light let me just dim this light and you can see it's steadily getting brighter obviously it's just like any fluorescent light when it turns on at first it's a little bit dimmer than when it's fully running you can see it surrounds the drum quite nicely with UV light and gets around there the reason why it is in this side of the drum as well I'll put this light back on is because this uh, rubber gasket here on the drum is not actually UV stabilized so if it was on this side of the drum or going inside the drum it would make this uh, rubber gasket go really rock hard and fail eventually because it will uh, perish it but there none of the UV light actually affects the uh, gasket from that angle so it should be fine and it still gets to the drum and uh, so there you go, that's what the drum looks like. So here we are looking at the other pond's drum filter with the UV in it. Now the other filter that I've just put the UV light in is actually two months older than this one. So there's not much difference in their age, but this one has always had the UV light in it. And as you can see, because of that, it looks brand new, the filter. And it is really clean. Obviously you've still got muck lighting bottom and bits of mucking bottom you still get that but there's none of the brown stuff actually on the screen itself it keeps the screen so clean and uh, that's what I want the new UV light to do in this drum and uh, time will tell so let's see what happens so the UV light's been on a week now and uh, working its magic and you can see that this piece here where the UV light actually is is a bit better I'd say uh, I haven't actually cleaned the drum itself I did clean around the edges when I uh, installed the UV light but I haven't cleaned this bit here uh, and obviously the UV light ends at this point so it's not actually getting this section too much I don't think and it'll probably take a lot longer to work on that bit and uh, yeah but I'm quite pleased with it, it obviously it's not uh, it's not powerful enough to actually do anything to my pond and I do have another uh, 220 watts of UV lights on this pond uh, that are in line in the basement but uh, it just this one's just in here just to clean keep the drum filter itself clean and uh, it seems to be doing all right I'm quite pleased with it the only issue is is you can't really have the lid off because you don't want to be looking at that light it does like I have uh, been looking at it about a minute now and it does sort of make my eyes ache uh, but I don't really lift the lid very often, I'm not bothered I, uh, in fact you can tell how often I lift the lid on that one, it's got a cover on it <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, I really don't look inside them very often so having the UV light not turn off isn't really a problem to me but you could put it on a switch if you wanted or something but I haven't done that Thank you for watching this video on installing the UV light on my drum filter. If you like this video then please like it. If you want to see more videos like this then please feel free to subscribe. And I shall see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.